This was originally launched in 1976 and it was created for strippers as a nipple dye. Hey there gorgeous, hope you're having a great day. Today we're taking a trip back to a simpler time and I'm going to be showing you a full face today of makeup from the 90s that you can still get today. I'm also including some fun facts about each product and some historical references. So if you love history, you love makeup, you will adore this. I have already applied a base to my eyes to start. So let me show you what I did real quick before we get into the products. I used the Viseart Neutral Matte to create what you're seeing here. And I took this shade from the palette and I applied it into the crease. And then I took this dark brown right here and I used that on the outer third of the lid. And then I also blended a little bit of this on the inner third of the lid. And I took a little bit on a fluffy brush and blended this into the socket line of the crease. And I did a lot, lot, lot of blending with all of these eyeshadows to get this evenly smoked out, blurred look that you're seeing here. I did it like this because the eyeshadow that we're gonna be using is very glittery. That leads me to the first product and it's Urban Decay's Midnight Cowboy. This eyeshadow was launched in 1998. It's a pink shimmery champagne shade, a little bit of glitter mixed in the formula there. And we're gonna be applying this directly into the center of the lid. I'm applying this wet by the way, so I spritzed it with a little bit of setting spray. I didn't know the history behind Urban Decay, so it was really fascinating to research it for this video, but it turns out that they launched in 1996 and it was created by two women in their kitchen <laughs> had no cause uh, no chemistry experience whatsoever they just decided they wanted makeup products that were outside of the norm they wanted something that was more edgy and it definitely was for the time that it came out when they first launched in 1996 they had 12 nail polishes and 10 lipsticks. And the nail polishes had this green and purple colors. They were colors that were not ever really seen before. And the lipsticks that you can still find today, I believe, had names like Rust, Smog, and Plague. <laughs> And the way that they catapulted themselves to where they are now was Wendy, one of the founders of Urban Decay, attended music festivals specifically targeting Gwen Stefani and Shirley Manson and asking them to try their cosmetics. And so that was what helped put them on the map. So it just goes to show you, even if you feel like you have no experience, if you have a business or an idea, you can do it. If they can do it, you can do it. One of my most favorite makeup products that I fondly remember using in the 90s was Max Factor's 2000 Calorie Mascara. This one. But what happened is Max Factor lost relevance and market share in the United States. And in 2010, Procter & Gamble decided to pull U.S. distribution and focus on their CoverGirl makeup line. And Max Factor moved their production to the UK and Russia, and now they have $1.2 billion in annual sales. Unfortunately, this is not the same formula as what I so fondly remember in the 90s. It was a very thick, volumizing mascara, and it's thinner now, it's drier. While you can still get this if you special order it from the UK, it's not as good as it once was. Which is a shame because Max Factor was the originator of a lot of the cosmetics that we use today. He started everything in the 30s and he coined the phrase make up. Revlon's Color Stay Foundation. It's changed packaging so many times over the years. It's changed names many times too, but it still remained the same formula that was created in the 90s. And for me, it's one of my all time favorite drugstore brands that I know is going to be long lasting on the face and looks the same from beginning to end. The other one that came up in my search that has been around since the 90s is the CoverGirl Clean Foundation, which is not one that you can find easily anymore. If you go to places like Family Dollar and the more affordable stores like that, you can find it very easily and cheaply, I might add but it still has that Noxzema smell to it, which to me is the pinnacle smell of the 90s because I don't know about you, but my friends and I were all using Noxzema 
It's like, it was the thing. Another survivor from the 90s comes from the YSL brand, and that is their Touche Eclat highlighting pen. Supposedly, it takes 200 clicks before you'll empty the pen, which comes out to 21 cents per click, and it's so popular that there are six sold every minute. This was created by Terry Gunsberg, and it was something that she created in her kitchen, and she used it on sets for many years before it became a part of the YSL brand. It's one of the first ever highlighting products created, and the word éclat means brilliance in French, and it does add an amazing brilliance to the under eye area and the coverage is insane with this one. Now you can use it by itself as I'm using it here or you can apply it over the top of concealer. It's really up to you. And you can also use it as a highlighter around the face. The click pen design was a complete accident. She originally wanted a concealer pen with a sponge and then her production manufacturer sent her this brush by accident and she ended up really loving it and adjusted the formula so that it would come out easily. And the design of the pen was inspired by her children because she said when she would take her children to school in the morning, she would have exactly one hand to do her makeup with and she wanted something that she could easily just click the product up out of instead of having to use both hands to open it. So Terry, I feel you. Surprisingly, this almost didn't make it into stores. YSL originally didn't want it, but when they put Terry in charge of cosmetics, she decided to launch it on her own, and it's been widely successful ever since. Cody's Airspun Powder. This launched in 1935, and I distinctly remember using this one in the 90s, and it's amazing to me that this makeup product has been around as long as it has, and so many people still love it. It's it's another one of my go-to favorites. You know, if a makeup product has gone that long, it's got to be good. Another widely popular makeup product from the 90s that was not created or launched in the 90s, but for some reason spiked in popularity, was the Benefit Benetint Lip and Cheek Stain. This was originally launched in 1976, and it was created for strippers as a nipple dye. This is how businesses are made. So people see a need and then they fulfill it. What's fascinating to me is how they thought to create this makeup product, the originators of it would steam rose petals in their kitchen and then used the rouge to create the stain. It's genius, isn't it? And it's still a great product after all these years. And there is a soft hint of rose in the formula also. I'm going to take a moment here and pause to talk about my nails because you've probably noticed the color on them. This is Chanel's Vamp nail polish. This came out in 1994. It was made for Paris Fashion Week and Carl Lagerfeld was also looking for a dark nail polish to use in black and white photography for his line in 1995, which is why this was created. When it was created, there was a six to 12 month waiting list just to get it. Unfortunately, this particular color is not available anymore, but they do have one very similar that they have replaced it with called Rouge Noir. By comparison, it's a little bit deeper in color, so it's not exact to what you're seeing here, but I've looked at them side by side and they are so similar that you really cannot tell. So if you like this color, it is still available. And I have to say too, the Chanel nail polish has really astounded me. I bought this years ago. I'm talking back in 2014, 2015, somewhere in there, and it still is like brand new. There was no clumpiness when I went to go use it today. I was amazed at how good it was after all these years. One of the makeup products that went viral, I think it was last year, is one that is not new to the market at all. It's been around for decades, but it just picked up steam on TikTok, and that was Clinique's Black Honey. This was originally created in 1971. It came in a pot. It was not like this. And it was the first makeup of its kind to be so popular because it created a no makeup makeup look. And it was universally flattering to many different complexions and skin tones. And the reason why so many women love it is because it brings out and enhances your natural lip color. So I'll just show you what it does. In the event you've never seen it. If I apply it to my bottom lip, you can see. See how it just enhances my lip color a little bit more? It's beautiful. But let's talk about some brown lipsticks because they truly are what defined this decade. 
brown lipstick as we know it, at least the cool brown lipstick, was birthed in the 90s. Before the 90s, it was mainly reds and pinks, and that was all you saw. In October 1990, Rolling Stone had a cover with the women of Twin Peaks, and they are all wearing this brownish red lipstick, and this is where the trend really picked up steam. Additionally, in 1991, Bobbi Brown was also a forerunner with this brown lipstick trend when she added 10 brown-hued shades to fill the void that she saw in the market for wearable, more simplistic makeup. MAC was also another really popular brand in the 90s, and they had four lipsticks that were on trend for this decade that are still available today, and they are MAC's Creme de Nude, which I absolutely love, Taupe, Whirl, and Cherish. But the two lipsticks that stood out to me the most in terms of memory back to this decade were from Revlon. So those are the ones I'm gonna be showing you today. The first one is Rum Raisin. This was that brownish red hue that was so popular. I remember Drew Barrymore wore this one a lot in the 90s and I wore it a lot myself. I remember distinctly wearing this shade. My dad didn't like it, but... Mm. <laughs> The other one was Revlon's Coffee Bean. This is not as red brown as Rum Raisin. It's a little bit of more of a brown shade by comparison, still on trend and still available today. And I just discovered that I had a poppy seed in my teeth this whole time. Oh well, now you know I'm human. <laughs> if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you wanna be notified of new videos like this in the future. Let me know which fact you found most fascinating today. And if you use any of these products, feel free to share that below as well. Enjoy your weekend. I'm wishing you a beautifully blessed one ahead. I speak love, peace, and joy into you and into your home and look forward to seeing you again next time.